Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. From outrageous owners... <laughs> ..to dodgy decor... Come, warm yourself at my medieval hearth. I mean, it's a joke. Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. It looks like something died here. Or her quest for perfection. That is a sign to me of just how lazy the whole operation has become. This week, the hotel inspector enters the dragon's den. Bollocks. This is horrible for me. Ugh. You're the one that's got to sort this side out oh, a yes. bit. Thank you very much, and you're supposed to be helping me. Do smile, it. Smile, smile, smile through it all. I don't want to go. Could be the end. The reality is, darling, this is the business we're in. Tears Cross, West Wales. The Welcome Traveller Inn, run by former Newport fish and chip shop owners, the Partridge family. Jeff and Babs bought the eight-bedroom pub and B&B, striving for a better life for themselves and their daughters, Sarah and Kirsty, in the peaceful Pembrokeshire countryside. It was the dream to come down to West Wales, really was. We just always wanted to come down here to live. We just decided, right, we're going to go for it. And we did. But seven years on, the dream has soured. And in the hills of West Wales, the peace has been shattered. Lock it in, you psycho. Get down. Nobody gets on. If you want me to go, any more time you like If you want me to go, I'll go. Pitiful occupancy rates, rising debts and poor reviews have left the close-knit Partridge family at each other's throats. Well, you won't be done. You're doing sweet F.A. all I afternoon. I haven't been doing sweet F.A. at all. My sister and my dad are the worst, because they both think that they're both right. Shut your mouth. I live them to pieces, but we clash. Mm. Dad Jeff handles all things culinary. Watch my lips. There is no nuggets. Have you looked in the other freezer? There is no nuggets. Have you looked in the other freezer? Mum Babs does the books and charms the guests. Yep. My mum got one of them faces which, if you don't know it, you think, oh, my God, I'm going to drink my drink up and I'm going. Yep. Younger daughter Kirsty helps with the bar and bedrooms. Oh, she thinks she's a footballer's wife. When I went to Egypt, they had all these nice big swans with the towels. And her older sister, Sarah, who dreams of taking the business over, does a little bit of everything. Do you need a hand with your luggage? Do you want me to grab anything for you? I definitely want to be part of this business for the rest of my life. I've never felt at home anywhere else. This is where I belong. Despite their passionate approach to the family firm, the Partridges are on the brink of losing it all. I don't think we can go on much longer. I don't, honestly. Being blunt about it, I think it's come down to shit or bust. I know we're struggling. Um, there's been occasions when I've walked into the office and I've seen Mum crying. Bookings, I haven't got hardly anything in at all. It's all empty. If we lost this place, we'd be heartbroken. We really would. Bills are not being paid, and if they don't get paid, then that's it. Simple as. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to go. <laughs> Enter the hotel inspector. The desperate Partridge family have called on the help of renowned hotelier Alex Polizzi but first impressions aren't good. That must be it, but the signage is really bad. It would be easy to fly past it and nobody would notice. 
To try and find out where the partridges are going wrong, Alex will stay the night. Hello. 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 Hi. Hiya. Sarah. Yes, Mrs. Polisi. Alex. Hiya, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for inviting me to come. That's a pleasure. Um, do we check you in? Absolutely. Yep, come with me. This is room four. Thank you. Is this your nicest room? This is our best room. This is one that we've just recently decorated. Twin beds. I could have done with a bit more ironing. <laughs> OK, yeah. Um, OK. I'll have a look around and then as soon as I get a chance, I'll come back down and find you again. OK, thank you. Thank you. Left to her own devices, Alex can begin her investigation. There's no headboard here, and I think that really makes the room look a lot more down market. Why would you bother? It's a token attempt at art, and either you have to have something big enough to fill the space, something that refers back to the location. We're in Pembrokeshire. It's got one of the most beautiful coastlines in the world, and yet you've got a pathetic little green flower. So far, so bland. And the other seven bedrooms are equally dull, depressing. It's all very mismatched. It wouldn't be that hard to make this room a lot nicer. And mind-numbingly functional. It's a decent-sized room. It's got some natural light. <sighs> what else can I say about it? Perhaps the 66-seat restaurant can provide more warmth and character. There is something lacking. It is not a pretty room, is it? This room depresses me. It's been a less than inspiring start. Now Alex wants to test the Partridge's food offering, the mainstay of many a rural pub. The menu is enormous, especially for a not very busy restaurant. And I'm wondering if it was busy, how on earth Jeff would cope in the kitchen on his own. So I'm going to test him a bit and I'm going to order quite a few different dishes from the menu and see whether his ambitions and his ability match up. OK, Dad, we've got an order here. Any problems? Ooh, give me a shout. Dad, you've got a lot here. Yeah. She's testing me. She's got a lot to eat. <laughs> Shit, don't go flamping. Shit. Give me an egg. An egg. What's this? What? Where's this omelette going with? 40 minutes in, there's no sign of any food. On you. No, on you. I've got it down. Where are you? Is it hasn't come out fast enough? <laughs> Whose fault's that then? Whose fault is that? Yours, Dad. And I waited over an hour for my dinner. Oh, shit, I forgot the lasagna. By the time Alex's meals are finally dished up, the partridges are in meltdown. Is this all you've done, is that? Yeah, what do you want more, do you? Oh, well, that looks epoxy as shit, doesn't it? It's OK for you standing by there and giving your chops. Yeah, it's but easy. Daniel, you're the one that's got to sort this side out. Oh, yes, it. thank you very much. And you're supposed to be helping me, not and taking I the been, piss. And I'll take a piss, I have been helping you. You should have had it all out in the beginning, so you should know, cos you should have been cooking it, shouldn't you? You shouldn't have been going by there. No. That's no... Oh, is it a chicken or what? Yes, it's a chicken, you know it's a chicken. Hey, but answer that phone and I'll chuck it up the bastard window. Oh, bollocks. Pine potatoes, garlic bread. Thanks. So the food's taken about an hour and a quarter to get to the table. Very nice, but it just shows that one man, or one man and his daughter, cannot cook this number of dishes on a menu. They need to keep it small and they need to keep it more manageable. Here we are, Alex. Thank Something you. I forgot, I'm awful sorry. We've been fighting down there. I can hear, I you can, can hear. I'm sure that all the young farmers Whoa. enjoyed it too. You throw in a bit of entertainment, do you, with the dinner? It's all far from the warm Welsh welcome this traveller was expecting. And things may be about to get even worse. Table, he's about to walk because they haven't had any food. I'm so asked for salt and pepper and got the glare. Where the fuck do we go from here? 
The Partridge family have run the eight-bedroom Welcome Traveller in West Wales for the past 11 years. But bad reviews, poor occupancy rates and mounting debts have put the Partridges in a pressure cooker. Last night, hotel inspector Alex Polizzi witnessed just how heated things have become. It's OK for you standing by there giving your chops. Yeah, it's but easy. Daniel, you're the one that's got to sort this side out oh, a yes. bit. Thank you very much, and you're supposed to be helping me. I thought it was incredibly unprofessional of Sarah and Jeff to argue quite so vociferously and so publicly. I mean, they didn't even bother closing the door to the kitchen. You know, if you can't deal with the pressure of a table with eight dishes, I think they should give up on the restaurant business entirely. And it seems Alex isn't alone in questioning the Partridge's people skills, as eldest daughter Sarah discovers when she checks the hotel's latest review. It's upsetting, it is. They slated off my mum. They said uh, the landlady was rude and not a single apology passed her lips. I don't think it's fair at all. I think it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. With the business and the family falling apart, Alex knows it'll take some tough love to put them back together again. First, Sarah must learn to zip her lip. I'm sorry, but we're going to have to start the day with the bollocking. I was shocked at how unprofessional you were in the kitchen yesterday. Although you may be at breaking point, you cannot show that to your customers. Remember, this is supposed to be a professional operation. It sounded like it was in meltdown last night. I feel like it's a bit mean to say that to you when you're already upset about something. The reality is, darling, this is the business we're in. You get criticised the whole time. Crying doesn't help anything. Get mad, get, you know, get energised by it, but don't just crumble. Okay. That's the main thing. OK. Maybe the blue sky up there. Dad Jeff must curb his ambitions in the kitchen. Lovely. So, for example, I mean, look how many main courses you've got. Yes. Do you need to have three different burgers? Do you need all those different meats? Basically, I would like your menu to be able to fit on one side. On one side. Yeah? Yeah, fine. All right, Tommy. If the welcome traveller is to survive, the Partridge family must all pull in the same direction. Alex gathers them together to set out a clear plan of action. With eight frequently empty guest rooms, the business is in desperate need of some proper marketing. Tell me what you've done so that I know that you've tried it and it hasn't worked. Where do you advertise? Where do you spend you've your done money? Local newspaper. Yeah. And then it was um, flyers, posters in shops and um, lampposts, etc. We've always done that, though. Yeah, we, we yeah. still do that now. And then we, we tried, yeah. Then we tried advertising with Radio Pembrokeshire, karaoke as well. We've done a big pub. But stuff. what have yeah. you? Ad what have yeah, you been true. advertising? Is what I mean. Because mm. telling people you're here, yeah, is one thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm suggesting that we advertise the truth. This is clean, family-run no frills accommodation. I would say that that is nothing to be ashamed of. And in fact, it's something to be proud of doing well. With their no frills product clearly spelt out, the Partridges should immediately start targeting new business. There's plenty of people who are traveling for lots of reasons who need cheap accommodation. There is a huge amount of adventure and outward bound providers here. And all those people who are really interested in canoeing, climbing, walking, all they want to do is some, have somewhere to lay their heads at the end of yeah. the night that is clean, that is affordable, where they can get a decent meal and not be ripped off. Now, I'm not saying that the rooms couldn't do with some charting up, because I'd be lying through my teeth. So, Kirsty, the room that you did, my room... What, what did we roughly spend? Approximately. £1,500 in total. OK, well, I think that's a lot of money to spend. Mm. So I'm going to cast down the gauntlet to you and say, I want you to spend £500 on just doing a room, though, not a room and a bathroom. I don't think you need to change beds, but, for example, we do need headboards. Definitely, yeah. I agree with you. Uh, I know it's not what your dream was of doing for it's this something. place. Neutral. Mm -hmm. Neutral. Cheap as chips. Yeah. Mm. Next, 
the frequently deserted restaurant should be at the core of the operation. This is an area which is so weak. I mean, some weeks you make, you know, £100 in the kitchen, 167 quid in August. It's amazing to me. This room should be the heart of the building. Yeah. It feels a bit bland at the moment. It feels a bit unloved in here. It doesn't feel massively welcoming or cheery. And this is where I would like to put my attention, which is in making this room much warmer, much more inviting, and the centre of operations. Can I say something on the, on the menu side? You open the kitchen about 7 o'clock, and I think it should be opened earlier. I've always said, and I really do think it should be opened earlier. Let's ask a few people. Last but not least, the Partridges need to do some urgent market research. Final thing is that we're on a pretty busy road. How many cars pass in ten minutes? Lots. And none of them stop here. Nobody knows that we exist, do they? But you haven't found out why that is. So I've got another challenge for you. I want you to make a big sign one day and say, please stop for free cakes and coffee, and ask people what is the purpose of their journey and what would it take to bloody make them stop? A week later, and Kirsty has taken up Alex's challenge to create a good standard no-frills room for £500. Oh, can I? That is lush. I love that. The rooms need as much rejuvenation as the food side of this business. That's, that's, a, that's a nice plain one. Oh, yuck. The room side is capable of generating enormous profit for them with much less work. Oh, look at that. You're on the laugh. It's very tempting to get involved with Kirsty with the rooms. Are you actually going to buy that? I'm um, biting my tongue very hardly. The Partridges must now find out why, with the welcome traveller positioned on a busy road, they don't get more trade. There's an arrow there, so we need to... So it needs to be turned around there. Yeah, well, we'll do that now, Grab yeah? Your side. No! Yeah? No, see, the arrow's still pointing that way, you plonker. Stop! <laughs> Straighten. Ah, my balloon off. Come back. <laughs> They're not doing very well out there. I think the heavy mob is going to have to go out. Oh. I got to die. Come on then, Dad. You said you'd get him in. Bollocks. As the results come in. Come in by you. Come in by you. It's clear that, to date, their marketing efforts have left a lot to be desired. Do you know what this place is? No. no. Do you know about accommodation? No. How many years have you lived here? Well, most of my life, really. Do um... you know that we also do restaurant, meals and B&B? No, I didn't, no. OK. Weddings and other functions? No. They all said the same, really. Obviously, you've driven past the same before you see it, really, so... There was a couple of them that said that they thought this place was a house. It doesn't look like a pub from the outside, really. So it goes to show that we definitely need to do something outside for signage. But even if they had customers, would the Partridges be able to cope? Where's the mushrooms and the any of it? Bollocks. Smile, for God's sake. If a budget holiday in Wales isn't your style and you're in need of a relaxing, luxurious beach break where you can put your feet up and relax in some warm Caribbean sunshine, you'll be pleased to hear that we're giving you the chance to win a week's holiday for two, staying at the luxury Treasure Beach Hotel in Barbados. You and your guest will stay for seven nights in a sumptuous suite, and to make sure you can both get the most out of your holiday, We'll arrange travel insurance for you both, and you'll also receive £1,000 spending money. All you have to do to enter is call 0904 161 5 or text HOTEL to 6 5 or send your name and phone number on the back of a postcard to Hotel Inspector 2, PO Box 62244, London N8 1BB. Calls cost £1.53 from a BT landline. 
Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Texts cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com forward slash win. After 11 years running the Welcome Traveller in Pembrokeshire, it's all gone pear-shaped for the partridges. I just never thought in a million years it was going to be so, so hard. I really didn't. Their business is on the rocks, and they're in danger of losing their home and livelihood. It is definitely the last chance. This is, this is make or break. Um, if this doesn't work, that's it. Acclaimed hotelier Alex Polizzi has discovered a family with plenty of heart. You didn't, you didn't I know. No, I said to you no, that she you doesn't didn't. want what Jordan's having. Running a hotel with no soul. She's asked them to embrace a no-frills philosophy and up their efforts at marketing. She's also given youngest daughter Kirsty the job of creating a template design for the tired and dreary bedrooms for no more than £500 each. So I think we'll leave the table where it is. Well, you've got to think about this, because I, I know. you can't keep taking things on and off all the time. I think she's trying to get the, the frill bit back into it. So, yeah, I have doubts. I don't think she's going to be able to keep to what we need her to keep to. God, these are well heavy. Seven weeks after her first visit, Alex is back to check on progress. And despite Sarah's scepticism, Kirsty has been the model of self-restraint. Well, you've done a really good job. This looks fab. I like the headboards. Two bedside tables with drawers, very good. Two lights. The fact that the furniture all matches. Yeah. Things like that really do make a difference. Even that chair you get away with all of a sudden. I know, yeah, and I hated so, that chair, but it's, it's, it's fine, it's right, isn't it? It's absolutely fine. Yeah. You know, the thing is, the first impression's really good. Yeah. Having things like the headboards makes yeah. such a difference to yeah. the look of a room. Having it all freshly painted, it is missing a picture or two. Yeah. But I think you can add those as and when you find yeah. something nice and cheap. This is the standard, that if all the rooms were this standard, then I think you'd be doing really right. well, darling. It yeah. would be perfect. Yeah. I'm Thanks. really pleased with you. But it's not all good news. Strapped for cash, the Partridges have been unable to afford any advertising, and the situation at the hotel is getting desperate. So things haven't been great, basically. been very quiet. Very. Very, very. Have you had any people in the B&B? No, it's been dead. And the bar side? Dead, quiet. And the restaurant side? Nothing in the restaurant at all. Is it worse than it's ever been, do yeah. you think? It is definitely. It's definitely. The Partridge family are teetering on the brink of disaster. With bills to pay and little money coming in, they must act quickly. First of all, I'd like to see what you did with the menu, because I've got a plan. One page. <laughs> yeah. Well done. I didn't think you were going to cut it down this much, and I'm really pleased this is much more realistic. Which is lucky, because my plan is to try and fill your restaurant tonight. Tonight? Tonight. We've got to tell people you're here. People have got to know that this is somewhere you can come and get good food and get good booze and welcome company. Yes? Yeah. So, as they're not coming in of their own free will, I'm going to drag them in. The Welcome Traveller needs customers fast. Have you ever heard of the Welcome Traveller in Tears Cross? No. No, you haven't. If you have a chance to go... I will. I'd be very grateful. Alex is hoping that with the new cut-down menu, the Partridges will be able to create a good impression and remind the locals they still exist. Please, will you come and have dinner tonight? While the hotel inspector does her best to drum up business, 
If you've got time, doll, I would love you to come. OK, well, yeah. that's a date. Thank you, lovely. <laughs> Alarm bells are ringing in the kitchen. Cheese? Cheese, you need cheese. I thought I'd just seen cheese in You there. need cheese? Dad, you keep talking to me like this, right? No, and I'm well, just I'm, gonna I'm go telling you're telling you, you're not listening, Sarah. Yeah, but you're not even checking, I Dad. I don't need to. You need cheese. No, don't, don't start. Yourself, you don't start, you, oh. you go again, look. So do you think you'll be able to come? It would be lovely if you could. I just hope everyone all don't come in together. And probably that's what will happen. Jeff's fears soon prove justified. Evening. Can I take your coat? Ma'am, can I give you a menu? Is this all right for you? As the guests flood in, it immediately becomes clear the partridges are in hot water. I need four um, prawn cock... Uh, shit, uh, mushrooms. Kirsty's in confusion. Rosé? Ma'am, do we have rosé or is it just white and red we've got? I'm stressed. I'm really stressed. It's very obvious that they haven't had these kind of numbers of people. It's very obvious that they don't really know how to behave. Bah! Where do I go? What do I do? The kitchen isn't communicating. Where's the mushrooms what? and the... any rings? Dad! It's very clear to me that actually they're <laughs> missing some very basic skills. Babs is hardly the hostess with the mostess. With chips. Most of the salt and pepper. And got a glare, which made me think I'd better not ask for the vinegar or there might have been trouble. There's just no welcoming ambiance. Smile, for God's sake. Don't look like this is pulling teeth. And the whole event is chaos. Oh, bastard, things going out. Oh, Darling, that doesn't look very nice, does it? It looks awful, darling. Yeah, but when the gravy goes on it, you won't see it, though, will you? Service! Apparently the soup's not hot. Oh, bollocks. Guys, what's the matter? Guys, we've got a table in the back to walk, because they haven't had any food. And that's the scampi and the gammon. Do you reckon there's a bottle of wine or something? No, 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 I think better not, because I've actually got a walk. Where the fuck do we go from here? <laughs> The evening has shown Alex just what a mountain the partridges have to climb. I feel like the presentation was wrong. I feel like service skills were definitely lacking. There's a lot that each of the partridges still need to learn and that I need to teach them. And it makes me feel like I really have to now pull out all the stops. If the family are ever going to turn their business around, drastic action is required. Alex's makeover of the bland restaurant begins immediately. I need to make it much more warm, much more welcoming, somewhere that you'd really like to sit and eat. While the partridges must spread their wings. Alex is packing them off to London for some desperately needed training. She's given them an address in the West End where they can hone their skills. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> no way. This is a winter. Oh, my I God! Go home. The Five Star Savoy prides itself on being one of the world's most prestigious and opulent hotels. It's seen as a benchmark for good service. I brought the partridges to London because I feel really strongly that service skills are virtually the same across the industry. It doesn't matter whether you're running a five-star luxury establishment like the Savoy or a no-star establishment in Pembrokeshire. Welcome to Savoy. Nice to have you here. With the Partridge family. Nice to meet, nice to meet you. you. Welcome to the best hotel in the world, where the art of service is very important. Each of the Partridges will be schooled in the skills they most lack. Jeff and Sarah are being taught presentation and communication by banqueting chef James Paré, while learning the Savoy's signature Arnold Bennett omelette. And there you are. You want to try to keep calm and collected all the time? Well, it helps when everything's prepared. So I think that's one thing I, I would say we should, should work on for sure, is just talking through each dish, dish before service, and, and that might go a long way. Fantastic. Hold on to that. Kirsty is focusing on systems and organization with foyer manager Trevor Mordant. Any good hotel will have a sequence of service, a step-by-step -step guide to how they provide service in the restaurant. This is really heavy. That's all right. I'm strong. Yeah. I've got muscles. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. okay, great. So with afternoon tea service at the Savoy, we've got 29 steps. Good afternoon, would you like me to pour you some tea? Absolutely. Yeah? I can't hold it properly. It's all right. They're heavy. And Babs is getting a masterclass in front of house from head butler, Sean Daveron. First impressions are lasting impressions. And if I tell you, people make up their minds very quickly when they walk into an establishment, how they're greeted. What you should be saying? Good morning, Sean. How nice to see you. Great to have you here. You can catch somebody's hand like that. Good eye contact. Your voice needs to be excited, show that bit of excitement that you have somebody arriving. This is your home, so you're proud of it. Show that proudness. At the end of the day, what is so important is to make sure that your customers are happy. Good morning. Hello. Welcome to the Savoy. Thank you. Hi, Barbara. Thank you. Hello. Very nice to meet you. Um, I just wonder, is it my room ready, or do you... Um, can I I'm check in? Yes, can I check in? OK, lovely. Where do I go? It needs everyone working together to make sure things are as good as it gets. The more you talk to each other, the easier it's going to be, yeah? Every person has a role to play in the correct running of any establishment. Absolutely. Yeah. If you pay attention to little things, you find that big things uh, fall into line. Yeah, I just hope it doesn't get any more complicated. <laughs> Would you like milk first or after? After. Oh, I've done it wrong already. The newly trained up team must now impress the most demanding of hotel guests. Thank you. Good afternoon. Hello, Alex. How nice are you? Nice to see you. Thank you very much. Have you had a nice journey? Very nice journey, thank you. Yes, yes. and I've come for afternoon tea. Right, I'll show you that. Thank it's you It's a warm much. welcome from Babs, but can Kirsty prove she can cope when she's working to a system? Would you like milk first or after? After, please. Yes. Yeah. Just a drop of milk. Yeah. Lovely. OK. Fantastic. And have Jeff and Sarah finally learnt that you can make an omelette without cracking heads? How are you doing, Sarah? OK, but I think you should have done some work, though. Mmm! Mmm! Delicious. After a nervy start, the plucky oh. partridges have proved they too can be a class act. Is it, has it been useful? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, obviously, I do understand that the Savoy, you know, world famous, is a very different establishment for the one you guys own and run. But everything is translatable into your establishment because the ground rules of good service are the same wherever you go. The next challenge I have for you... Uh, <laughs> and the last one is to make more people aware of the fact that you're here. So, we've got St David's Day coming up. What better day to do something? But I want you to open the doors to business people, families, anyone that you can think of. I want to see a full house. OK? Mm -hmm. Yes. The Partridges must use their newly acquired skills to impress the West Wales community and attract businesses with the power to fill their no-frills bedrooms. And to help them make the right impression, Alex's redecoration of the restaurant is complete. Oh, my word. It's gone from an unloved, cold and soulless afterthought to a much more warm, welcoming and appealing dining space. Wow. And to help make this the centre of the B&B's operations, Alex has moved the depressing and isolated reception desk from the hallway right into the heart of the building. I really like that reception. We got a bed. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the clock. I like that the reception. This is beautiful. I can't wait to see people in here. Um, we need to get them in like ASAP so I can show it off. <laughs> but when St David's Day comes around, will their new room and skills be enough to relight the ailing Welsh dragon's fire? Welcome to the Welcome Traveller. Why, why have you put us in some little dive? If the accommodation is pants, then they're just not going to come back. Remember your training. If this doesn't work, then nothing's going to work. Now, let's cut to the chase. Bloody marvellous. The Welcome Traveller, West Wales. 
Hotel inspector Alex Polizzi has suggested the Partridge family host a special St. David's Day relaunch for their beleaguered business. And so far, the Partridges are game. Put your corner in first. This side's not flush. Hold it now, hold it. They're tackling the B&B's woefully inadequate signage. It's not straight. Oh, 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 oh. Go. I didn't look him. That is bloody marvellous. And trying to win the support of Pembrokeshire's outdoor adventure providers. This is what we need to do in Pembrokeshire. We oh, all yeah. need to be singing from the same hymn sheet and, and trying to work together. While not forgetting to love up the all-important locals. Excuse me, can I give you guys one of these? It's for the relaunch party, the welcome traveller in Tears Cross. With an empty bar, restaurant and bedrooms, the family are in no doubt just how important the event is. To be honest with you, it, it's got to be successful. It, it, whether it's, it's got it's to be. If this doesn't work, then nothing's going to work. Just up to us now whether we can do it. Adding to the pressure is the arrival of two very important guests. Cleopatra Brown and Jordan Williams run Celtic Co Steering, an outdoor adventure company that entertains 2,500 customers a year, most of whom need accommodation. Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Welcome Traveller. Nice to meet you. Hi, Hi. Babs. Right. I'm Jordan. Hi. Nice to meet you. Welcome. Alex has asked them to road test the Welcome Traveller in the hope that they'll add them to their very select list of recommended establishments. Right. This is your room. Oh, cool. OK. We can only put our name on, on something which lives up to, uh, to our values and our ethos. And uh, if we were to start recommending bad accommodation, they're going to turn up and say, you know, why, why have you put us in some little dive? If the accommodation is pants, then they're just not going to come back to Pembrokeshire. As Cleopatra and Jordan settle in, Arrangements for tomorrow's big day continue. Who said the sun don't shine on the righteous? With a newfound emphasis on yeah. being prepared. I've done scotch eggs, jack of potatoes with stuff in, vegetarian pasties. We fit the rolls, so that will give us a head start. Look out, Alex, because you we come. St David's Day, a date with destiny that could make or break the welcome traveller. Their business is at crunch time, and today is incredibly important for them. So although today is St David's Day and should be a celebration, they need to work very hard to make sure everyone has a good time, and hopefully that will be the basis for their following custom. Oh, could you imagine if nobody turns up? They'd be upsetting. I hope you noticed, as instructed, yes. I'm dressed in Welsh red. Beautiful. Thank you, you darling. Yes. Now, let's cut to the chase. Remember your training. Remember the fact that you kept on being told that communication between yourselves and with the customer is the most important thing. Obviously wreathed in smiles. <laughs> yes, brilliant. <laughs> All this hard work, this lovely room, you guys are so much more confident. I want to really see the difference. We can yeah. do this. I know we can yeah, do we it. Can. Yeah, we can. OK. Jeff, are you doing anything special today? I'm doing a Savoy special. Something that they taught us up there, big pad, which I've had a couple of dummy runs. Bloody marvellous. As the appointed hour arrives, all fears of an empty venue prove totally unfounded. The family's marketing campaign has paid off in bucket loads. The welcome traveller hasn't been this busy in years. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for the Partridges to win new business. But the big turnout has left them feeling sheepish. I am a bit nervous now. I just not the way. <laughs> no, and carry on. I'll be the chef <laughs> for a change. I'll do the washing up. <laughs> Three of you are in here, which isn't good. So, Kirsty, forget about the washing up and just go outside. Make sure that, because otherwise, I'm worrying that no one, not enough yeah. of the families out there. Jeff, Babs, Kirsty, and Sarah soon spring into action, demonstrating new levels of customer service. Hello. 
the bar obviously there and there's food there. <laughs> Attention to detail. Don't forget about presentation, Dad. Oh, right. Yeah. Cool. Communication. I put a lot in here because I want to do because they're big. Yeah, they're bigger than the ones yeah, that we had sure. before. And salesmanship. And all of the other rooms are, are spacious like this as well. So um, we can they're make some match. Yes. Yeah. The yeah. assembled guests are lapping it up. From Fisherman's Friends. Very, very pleasant, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a nice room. To combat gaming companies. Having been here, yeah. we would thoroughly recommend it. Definitely, definitely. Definitely, yeah. And most importantly, the co steerers. Certainly exceeded expectations. So you liked it here? Yeah, yes, yes, very much. Really good gift. Oh, good, I'm so pleased. Yeah, it's good. How many accommodation providers do you recommend? One camping, one bed and breakfast, one hotel, etc. So these guys will kind of fit into that bed and breakfast slash value hotel. So, uh, yeah, this is going to fill the, the niche for, uh, for families who want to pay a little bit, not less, if you get what I mean, but still want to be able to have enough money to go out and enjoy the, uh, and enjoy the coast. Thank you so much. I'm really music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs up. I think everything's going all right. Alex got a smile on her face, so I think that's OK. <laughs> so, yeah, if Alex is smiling, I'm smiling. <laughs> it's all going incredibly well. I can't believe how organised they are. The fact that they seem to manage talking to their guests and making sure that the food's replenished and dirty plates are cleared and that they go on smiling. I have to say, I'm very happy. As the event comes to a climax, it's clear the Partridges have pulled it off. It's a dream that we wanted to follow. We wanted to come to, to West Wales, particularly Pembrokeshire. Um, and we're here, and whatever happens, you ain't getting rid of us. <laughs> Today went pretty bloody well, didn't it? Yes. It went brilliant. Very well. Are you pleased? Very pleased. One of the first discussions we had, I said that I thought it was really important that you embrace your kind of value hotel status, your budget room status. And I think you've done that. I talked to the co-steering people. You know, they had 2,500 people through their doors last year, 80% of whom wanted accommodation. They definitely want to use you, so they're going to put you up on their website and they're going to use you in their strap line. Their suggestions are going to make a huge difference to your business. Brilliant. It's been a fantastic day here and I'm leaving the Welcome Traveller a very happy woman. I feel like my work here is done. The Welcome Traveller's found its niche and I honestly believe the Partridges can take the business forward on their own. I feel a lot more confident and positive, and I think we can put that forward now and make a, make a big success out of it. So, good old Alex. Yeah, I can hear her now shouting to me, come on now, darling, you wouldn't do that. Future's looking brighter, yes, definitely. Next time on The Hotel Inspector. It looks like something died here. What am I going to do? Any advice that you give me will have to suit me. <laughs> if you're in need of a luxurious beach break and fancy relaxing in some warm Caribbean sunshine, you'll be pleased to hear that we're giving you the chance to win a week's holiday for two, staying at the luxury Treasure Beach Hotel in Barbados. You and your guest will stay for seven nights in a sumptuous suite with travel insurance for you both and you'll also receive £1,000 spending money. All you have to do to enter is call 0904 161 5 or text HOTEL to 6550 or send your name and phone number on the back of a postcard to Hotel Inspector 2, PO Box 62244, London N8 1BB. Calls cost £1.53 from a BT landline. Calls from other networks may vary and from mobiles will cost considerably more. Texts cost £1.50 plus one message at standard network rate. Lines close at midday on the date shown on screen and three days later for postal entries. For rules and winners, go to channel5.com forward slash win. It's
It's been a right royal knees up lately, but who was the commoner that sorted out that stutter? We're on the case and reveal all in a brand new special, The King's Speech, tomorrow night at 8. But next tonight, Cameron Diaz stars in The Sweetest Thing.